Okay. Hello. I'll use the microphone again. Uh, okay, so today, like I said, we start, we start a new chapter. And uh, on, on full, full safety and full security. All right? Uh, one student told me I'm speaking very fast, so today I will try to go, you know, controlling. I'm a nice guy, so. But you have you have everything here, all right? Uh, you have this notebook, so we'll we'll follow along. If you remember, chapter one, chapter one, I ask you, what is food safety and what is food security, all right? And we we I want a definition on the board and. Uh, on the next page here, you have a very long definition of food safety. All right, everybody is on this page. All right, everybody is on this page, right? Okay. Yeah. So that's the third chapter. So we talk about food safety. The definition of food safety. As, as I wrote it here, is the food to which a person has access and that food should keep the person healthy and have a low probability of causing harmful effect. You see, this definition, you know, uh, I understand. Your first language is not English, right? So you see, what is important is not to memorize this definition like this one, okay? Is to understand the definition. Basically, if I need to, if I need to summarize this definition, all right, and I say I'm defining what is food safety, okay? Basically, food safety is what? It means what? The food, this, the food that I eat, right? The food that I eat, should not make me sick. Or cause or cause any harm, all right. So the food that I eat should not make me sick. Or if you want here, uh, if you want, you put here should not cause any harm. That one causing any harm is probably is probably more accurate here. Why do you know why do I say that? <coughs> because we have cases. For example, if you go to a restaurant and then you look at your food and you see some small plastic inside. Alright? Or you can see something different inside. We're talking about contamination here. This this food is not safe for consumption. All right. So, and over time, the food that we encounter that is not safe will make people sick. All right. So we ask the question. We this is the case where we talk, for example, about football, uh, football illness. All right. I give you an example. You go, for example, to elementary school in Daegu, all right? And then we have hundreds of kids. They come home, and all of them, they have like diarrhea. They're just like, oh, pay a pile, pay a pile, all right? So that must tell us that, hmm, maybe there is a problem with what these kids ate today, all right? So then we start to investigate what is the problem? What happened here? 
All right. And the question that I ask here is, who is the most vulnerable to food illness? Okay. So every time we talk about, uh, every time we be talking about, oh, okay, the food should not make me sick. Who, who do you think over time will easily get sick if they eat food that is not actually good? Who do you think will easily get sick? Any idea? Huh? Yeah, the young people, right? We talk about children, all right? Here, the people that will be the most vulnerable are what? We talk about the children, we talk about older people, all right? Or even in the cases of people who have a problem with their immunity, they are actually feeling weak or they are actually sick at this time. All right. So now, guys, on the table below, uh, on the table below, what do you see? You see that in terms of food safety, we put it in three categories here. All right. The first one is what? We talk about biological ones, all right? Type of football hazard, things that will contaminate the food. What can contaminate the food? So we have biological, we have chemicals, and we have physical. Everybody's on the on the table, right? So the Common examples that we often see of food poisoning. In this case, when you see, for example, I'll give you the example of children. They come home, they feel sick, they are vomiting, they have diarrhea. This is often the case of food poisoning. All right? So, then this type of food poisoning is often caused by what? The first category here, biological. Like, so we have what? Bacteria, mold, yeah. So the, you guys know that the molds, right? For example, uh, you have your bread, and uh, sometimes you see like, uh, you know, some thing on your bread, sometimes it's kind of greenish, sometimes it's bluish, all right? Uh, that's some type of contamination there. And we look at some of these uh, later on. For example, it's getting, you know, it's getting warmer in Daegu. And during the summer, uh, you will see that again outside people selling, for example, potatoes outside. And if you're not careful, you may actually see the potato, the colors changing a little bit. You see like some dust, like kind of bluish or greenish. If you read the note, we're talking about solani, which is very poison, uh, which is a poison here. All right? So we have bacteria, we have moles, we have viruses. And then on the chemical ones, what do we have? We have industrial chemicals. Remember, for example, you know, not far from Kemi University, we have factories here, right? And sometimes, you know, we often, a couple of weeks ago, we talk about pollution in the air. And that pollution, right, these chemicals also can go to the food. And when they get into the food, we have a problem. So food safety is actually a major health problem that we have to look at, all right? And we look at how to prevent, uh, prevent food poisoning. Uh, physical, the, the third one is physical. On physical, what do we have? We may have a glass, or we may have a plastic, bone, or any metal that we may find in the food. And this is very important, though, uh, because you guys know, if you work, for example, in McDonald's or some of these restaurants, even if you are working there, what kind of physical contamination we usually see? Any idea? What we usually see is people's hair. All right? So if you're not careful, just like, oh my gosh. You know, you see some hair, All right? So, uh, so, so these are some of the contamination that we may actually see. Okay, so let's look at, let's look at the biological one first, all right? Uh, let's look at the biological ones. Uh, what I will suggest you to do is that as we move along, as we move along with the notes, you also have uh, the study guide. All right, guys? You also have the study guide. So 
Like I told you, the best thing to do, right? The best thing to do is always to read before you come to class. Okay? For example, on the study guide, you look at the questions. Okay? You look at the questions, and as we move along, you try to understand, oh, okay, the BCT is to understand this. For example, the question one, what does question one say? Which of these individuals will be the least susceptible to foodborne illness? Is it a, a six-month-old infant, an 18-year-old teenager, or a 28-year-old man with AIDS? D, a 40-year-old woman with breast cancer? E, an 80-year-old grandparent? What is your answer for this one? What do you say? C? A? B? Okay, who says A? A? Okay, you, you see, these are the types of questions you may have on the exam, but fully understand. Sometimes you may have a problem with the language, but here um, is first to understand the question. The key element of this question is least susceptible to fall to, to uh, football illness. So when we talk about football illness, we say, oh, the people who will get easily sick are children. But here, the question is kind of the other way around. It's kind of the opposite. OK? If, if the question was, who will be the most Ah, now you got, I see some people smiling, right? Now you got it. If I, if I ask you who will be the most susceptible, then the answer will be what? Children or the people or people who have immunity uh, problem. You got it, right? So when you read it, what is the answer for this question? B, an 18 year old teenager. 18 year old teenager, yeah, he's strong, right? Yeah, he, he's able to face uh, these type of problems. You guys are following? We good? <clears throat> All right. So, and on the question number two, what does it say here? Biological hazards that may cause foodborne illness include all the following except. You see, here we need to know what are the biological hazards, right? You look on the table here, right? Uh, we talk about uh, when we talk about the biological hazard. What do we have? We have bacteria, we have molds, we have viruses, we have parasites, we have prions here. Okay, guys. This is honestly the best way to follow this class is. Don't wait for the last minute. As we move along, you also check. You know, try to read these questions before you, you come to class. And you know, then when you come, it's much easier. Okay? So what will be the answer for question number two? Biological hazards that may cause football illness. So when I talk about football illness, remember the definition of food safety. Alright? So, oh, we don't want the food to make us sick. All right, so in this case, what would be the answer? A, B, C, or D? That would be F, pesticide. When we put a pesticide, in which category do we put a pesticide? <coughs> pesticide, in which group? Is it the biological, chemical, or physical? Chemicals, all right? That's good. Oh, you guys are following. That's great, all right? All right, I thought that people will be hungry this afternoon. Okay, so we do, right? So as we move along, you can already fill out the answer with your study guide. Okay? So now, let's look at the page that talks about biological hazards here. All right? So you will see you will see, we give an example of natural occurring hazards like what? 
We talk about bacteria, mold, viruses, and parasites. And here, you can see on the picture, what do you see here? Uh, you see a bacteria, natural, uh, naturally living, like in a cow. So that even though, you know, the cow is dead, and that we have it in our barbecue, but we are not sure that the bacteria is actually killed here. All right? So we can still be infected by the bacteria, even though, you know what, we are actually enjoying the steak. All right? This is why it's very important to make sure that the food that we eat is actually fully cooked. But some people like it a little bit bloody and things like that. And uh, in this case, if you look at on the bottom, we have different uh, bacteria here, but here I mentioned uh, the Crocitrium uh, botulinum. That one is the one responsible for uh, botulism. So why is botulism here? You will look at the bottom. In the bottom of your page, everybody see botulism here on the bottom of your page? So it's a rare but serious paralytic illness, all right? That causes a nerve toxin that is produced by the bacterium. Anybody can see that? Botulism. You see both. So a paralytic illness, a paralytic illness, what does it mean? A paralytic illness. So, since it's attacking your nerves, you may reach a point where you're not able to move. Okay? You are not paralyzed. So, food safety is a major public health issue that we have to look at. Alright? Based on the food that we eat. And, guys, very important street food. A lot of us eat street food, right? How safe is the food that we eat? So this is why looking at some of these problems, all right, is important uh, to actually make the right decision for us here. Okay. So botulism uh, here is caused by Clostridium botulinum, and that you can have in some of the uh, the foods as well. And in some extreme cases, a person can be uh, uh, can be paralyzed here. Okay. So, um, now we talk about the mold. I told you that, for example, the mold, I mean, you can actually see them, you know, just check, uh, just check with your bread at home. If you leave the bread exposed for a little time, at one time you're going to see things forming uh, all the bread and, and stuff like that. Uh, but what I would like to talk mostly today is solanine, all right? Uh, summer time is coming, okay? Summer time is coming, and uh, this is the time. This is the time where we must be uh, the most careful, okay? So, and the example I give here, uh, the example I give here is. When you will see this summer, uh, you have uh, so you have your so you have your potatoes and stuff like that, right? Look, and it's an exercise that hey, maybe we should all do, right? With the presence of the sun, if you are careful, you may just see some dots, okay? You may just see some dots here. And uh, the solanine, the solanine is actually very poisonous. Meaning what? Meaning that the person can actually die. Okay? So, uh, you, so this summer, when you actually look at it, uh, you can actually pay attention uh, when you buy your potatoes, when you buy some of the... They usually sum and just say, ah, okay, is this one safe or is it not safe? All right. This is why it's, when you talk about food safety, it is a public health issue once again. People die of it almost every year, right? So we have, we have to look at it. So, um, and on the bottom you have like the cases of viruses. I will not uh, spend a lot of time uh, 
uh, on it and, and things like that. But there are some exceptions when I talk about moles, uh, exceptions like we talk about the cheese and things like that, usually uh, is actually uh, is, is actually okay. All right. So, uh, so you have the viruses, you have, you have the parasites. I won't be spending much time on those ones. All right. So, uh, on the chemical hazards, if you go to the next page, you have the chemical hazard. The chemical hazard, this is when we were talking about the, these pesticides, and what did I tell you guys? That uh, we, the industries that we have, not too far from the campus, and if you also have people who have the produce there, it's possible, right, that all these, these chemicals will come to the food. And you will see like a lot of people, mostly like children, can actually start having us some health issues about this. So when you talk about uh, food safety, it's not only uh, the area of agriculture and things like that, it's actually a major public health issue that the government has to be involved, different people have to be involved to make actually uh, better decisions. So you also have what, uh, the pesticides, or you have an herbicide, you have the fertilizers. Fertilizers are good, right? People say, okay, fertilizers are good, we need to you know, produce uh, our food and things like that. But at the end of the day, what is happening is, are they completely removed from the food when we really to eat them? All right? This is why it's always very important, even before we eat our apples and some of these products, to always wash, always wash. All right? And uh, it's one of the methods that we have to use all the time in order for us to prevent what? Uh, to be contaminated with, uh, with these uh, elements. Uh, the physical hazards, uh, you guys have them here, I already mentioned them. Uh, the glass, the bones, uh, you know, even insects, even fingernails, even your hair, you may also have them as well. All right? But sometimes rare, but not, uh, not impossible. But what will be interesting is to go to the next page now. Uh, how do we prevent it? How do we prevent? How do we prevent uh, football illness? All right. How do we prevent football illness? Just as you know, for example, when you talk about the bacteria, right? We, we can't see them. All right. Even on this table, we we can't see them. All right. So then, what do we do? Okay. So, personal hygiene is often time uh, what is um, what is recommended uh, to you know constantly wash our hands. All right. Uh, and people will say, oh, okay. Uh, you may actually uh, use uh, hand sanitizers, but hand sanitizers are not enough. All right. Hand sanitizers are not enough, so the personal hygiene of washing your hand consistently for how long? How long do you need to wash our hands? Anybody? How long do you wash your hands? One minute? Wow, that's pretty long. How long? 30 seconds? Yeah, I'll put 20 seconds here. You know, 20 seconds is a pretty long time though, right? Uh, because who said ball run for 10 seconds? <laughs> Alright, so uh, it means that who said ball has to run the, like 200 meters. As he's running, we're washing our hands. That's pretty long. <laughs> Alright, so, so if we say if we say 30 seconds, uh, it looks like a small number. It's actually a pretty long time. Uh, but from my experience, even when you look at people, uh, people don't even wash their hands for 10 seconds. You know, so then just put a bit of water and then they, you know, and then they go. But this is actually very, very important uh, when we talk about contamination here. We can easily get contaminated for different places. And if you look at uh, uh, one picture that I, put, uh, that I put here on the bottom, it's actually a very, very interesting picture. Uh, I don't see that a lot in some restaurants. But this is actually very important. And I actually like that, uh, uh, you know, when I was in Canada, if a restaurant does not comply, all right, so we have inspectors that come to the restaurant. If they don't comply, you know, uh, you will receive a yellow sticker. 
at your door. All right? That yellow sticker says to the owner, hey, you need to comply to food safety. All right? If the person, after we come back again, if the person does not comply, what happened? We put a red one, which means this restaurant is not safe at this moment. So, when do we check? We also check how they wash their dishes. And you can see on this picture, what do you have in this picture? You have uh, three compartments sink here. Like the first part is the washing part, when you have the hot soap uh, water. And then what do they do? They will rinse it with clean water, and then they will sanitize it. So it's a long process. But at home, how do we wash our dishes at home? In the same spot, right? Just put out the water, we wash, and then you just put it in the same spot. Okay? So, uh, this is actually uh, a, a very important thing to, to look at, where we have the three steps in some restaurant that need to be respected. So, you will see, everybody on this page, you will see, uh, you will see the three compartments saying that we should actually have uh, in good restaurants to make sure that the food that the people eat, right, is actually safe for consumption. Okay? Is actually safe for consumption. So, uh, this is actually uh, something that is very, very important to, 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 to look at. But over time, over time you will see that the most, uh, you know, uh, the bacteria that people will be infected with will be like salmonella. You guys like chicken, right? I think there's always like a, a festival in Nebu for what? Chimek? Chimek? Is that how you call it? So when you eat the chimek, are you sure that the chicken is actually, you know? Which, which bacteria we usually find in the, chi uh, in the chicken? Any idea? Which one? Which bacteria we usually find a lot in the chicken? Yeah, salmonella. Alright? So, and uh, you know, and some other food we have to cook a little bit, uh, a little bit longer. So, uh, as, as you look at it, uh, you, let's look, if you look at question number six here, what does question number six say? Uh, salmonella infection is one of the most common football illness and uh, is particularly likely to be contam uh, contaminated with. So, what would be the answer here? Where would we find salmonella the most? Fish, vegetable, casserole, poultry and eggs, fruit, drinks, or pasteurized milk? Yes, yeah, see, poultry and eggs. So, so, you, so what does it mean here? It means that we need to have people regularly coming to inspect, right, every food that is being produced because we have people dying uh, from these uh, bacteria. For example, in my PhD years, I work a lot with uh, uh, Staphylococcus aureus and Salmonella. Uh, Staph aureus, for example, kills millions of people every year, right? So uh, we have to we have to look at it. So uh, question number three: Foodborne illness from chemical hazard include all the following except which one? Uh, A, B, C, or D? Plant toxins. Animal toxin, agricultural chemicals, prions, industrial chemicals. D. All right, guys. So, 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 so I think, I think now we find we just found the best way to study together for these classes. All right. So that for every page that I'm going through, the goal, like I said, by putting back the video on YouTube is to actually help you to better understand so that you are not completely lost, all right? So that when we move from page to page, you also have to check that, oh, okay, I understand this question. Because the same question or similar questions will come to the exam. So for today, what we have to remember, the three categories in terms of food safety, right? What are the three categories of contamination that we have? We are biological, we have chemicals, and then we have the physical. So, and on the biological, we focus a lot on the bacteria ones, right? Focus a lot on, the, on bacteria and molds. And uh, we look at the, the chemicals, we focus on the toxins, right? The physical, I told you guys, the hair, nerves, and bones, and things like that. 
Okay, so uh, as you see, uh, for that part, I told you the part about food safety is going to be very short, so that you know you don't have to overwhelm yourself with uh, with that one. But understand the definition, understand the understand the prevention, and understand the category. All right. So on 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 Thursday, on Thursday we'll finish with food security pretty easy as well. Just giving you guys uh, the fundamentals. All right, and uh, just remember on Thursday too, I will give you your first assignment uh, where we look at uh, energy, right? Energy expenditure. You will have everything uh, to to do it. But very important, you know, don't work necessarily in the group unless you want to share your grades with your friends. Okay, guys. So uh, Thursday we finish this chapter. Uh, we we'll talk about uh, food security. And uh, once we done with it, that one, I give you the first assignment, and we go from there. Okay, so uh, come and see me for those who have questions. Uh, the semester is advancing very fast. Come and see me for some questions. If not, have a good evening, and I'll see you on Thursday. All right?